All right, so here's a flight I did a couple of days ago. And as you know, that guess from the thumbnail for this video, it ended up being a bit of an interesting one. Um, this is a flight I did, as you can see here, it was on a really foggy day. Um, actually, it wasn't foggy. It was just that the cloud layer was really, really low. And I actually happened to be flying from the top of a really tall hill. So pretty much as soon as I launched the aircraft and it started to climb, um, it got lost in the cloud. But as you'll see, as this flight progresses, I actually spent most of the time flying quite low below the cloud layer. So you're not going to spend the entire video just looking at white like you're seeing here. Um, you will actually be able to see some scenery. Um, so this flight was done at what was actually a new flying spot for me. I've not flown here before. Um, it's one of my flying buddies. He actually recommended it to me. Um, it's nowhere near my house. I had to drive quite a long way to get here. And uh, he was saying it was a really spectacular spot. And I was a little bit underwhelmed when I got there, obviously, because I couldn't really see a whole lot with all of the fog. But um, I've been there since. And, you know, yeah, it's a really good little spot. So you'll probably be seeing this a bit more in some future videos. Um, the flight you're seeing now was actually the second flight I did this day. Uh, the first flight I did, um, obviously just before this one, uh, was where I just sort of explored the area a little bit, sort of flew around, got to know the train, what was around. Um, and crucially, it wasn't quite as uh, cloudy or foggy during the first flight as it is in this second one, um, which meant I was able to see a bit more when I was doing my exploring. Um, but anyway, this uh, second flight, the goal that I had was to try and do some nice, smooth cinematic flying. Um, Cadex recently sent me a new beta firmware, uh, which finally had a software fix in it for the recording problem on the Avatar HD Pro camera. Um, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, uh, there was a problem with the Avatar HD Pro camera, which meant you couldn't record HD footage for more than 10 minutes, uh, probably a bit less than that, to be fair. Um, because the footage ended up being corrupted. But like I said, thankfully they sent this beta firmware which fixed that problem, um, which meant I'm now able to obviously record my flights in full. And crucially, that means I'm able to then use Gyroflow to stabilize the footage. So that was my goal in this flight, was to just do some nice, um, sort of like silky smooth uh, cinematic flying, try and do some nice uh, smooth gentle lines. Um, with the intention to then add gyro flow to the footage in post processing, you know, to you know make a nice little video. Um, but as you're about to see, that isn't quite what happened. So at the moment, as you can see, the aircraft is flying down this hill, down towards this lake here. And at the moment, everything seems fine. There was no indication that there was anything wrong with the aircraft. It seemed to be flying happy, completely smooth. Crucially, there's no sort of issue of vibration. But it's around about this point here that as I leveled the aircraft out, it then suddenly went into a spontaneous like tip stall. You see the aircraft just sort of started to spin around a little bit for a second then. And obviously that made me panic because the aircraft was flying over a river, as you can see. Um, and it was a little bit of a distance away from home. So yeah, obviously you got my heart racing. Um, but as you see, thankfully I was able to you know, take back control of the aircraft quite quickly. Um, at which point I decided that, you know, it's probably best to bring it back. There's clearly a problem. Actually, I did initially think that maybe my airspeed was a bit low and that's why the aircraft went into a bit of a tip stall. Although, obviously, I quickly looked at the OSD and I saw the airspeed was fine. And um, I've had this aircraft for over a year. I've probably flown it several hundred times and not once have I ever seen it enter a tip stall. So that didn't really seem like a likely option. So anyway, as you can see, I've started to fly the aircraft back and you can probably tell that, you know, the aircraft is leaning to the left quite a lot. Um, that's because I found that the aircraft just wanted to keep yawing to the right as I was flying back. So I was having to, you know, kind of roll to the left a little bit to offset that. At the time, I thought that might be due to the wind. I mean, the wind was kind of coming from the left hand side of the screen as you see it, although it wasn't really a particularly windy day. Um, so it didn't really seem likely, but again, that just reinforced my sort of desire to get the aircraft back. Um, now, at this point in the video, I'm sort of pretty much going back on the field that I launched from. And to my buddy who was there spotting for me, I said to him, like, now as I fly over your head, just have a look at the aircraft, tell me if anything looks wrong. And as I flew over his head, straight away, he said, dude, one of your motors is hanging off. Um, to which point I, I kind of laughed and I was like, really? Like, you, you're pulling my leg, right? Like, how could a motor be hanging off? And he's like, no, dude, seriously, one of the motors is hanging off of your aircraft. Um, 
So obviously I decided at that point, you know, the only thing to do was to land the aircraft, which is why you can see I'm now quite rapidly doing a turnaround and bringing the aircraft in for a landing. And it turned out that he was telling the truth. That was exactly what happened. One of the motors had indeed fallen off of the aircraft. Um, and obviously I was quite shocked to see this, um, but also I was in quite a lot of disbelief. And the reason for that is because weirdly, the exact same thing had happened the day before. <laughs> now I've been flying for many, many years and you know, I've never ever had a motor fall off of an aircraft, but then suddenly I found myself in a position where I found a motor had fallen off an aircraft two days in a row, which just seemed to be astronomically improbable thing to happen. Um, now, when the motor fell off the day before, it was a little bit different because what had actually happened on that occasion was that the motor mount had actually broken. And this happened before the aircraft even got into the air. You know, as soon as I put the aircraft to full throttle for launch, the motor fell off, you know, right there. Um, gave me one hell of a fright when it did it. Um, but I deduced that, you know, maybe the motor mount had got damaged on a previous flight or, you know, more specifically on a previous landing. Maybe it had a bumpy landing at some point, which had broken the mount. And that's why it fell apart, you know, when I tried to do the next launch. Um, but after doing a quick inspection of the aircraft, you know, after this occasion, you know, I found that the motor mount was, you know, perfectly intact. And actually the motor had fallen off on this occasion because the screws holding it in place had actually fallen out. So this was obviously very confusing. You know, two days in a row, I had a motor fall off of the aircraft, but for slightly different reasons. Um, so this obviously got me wondering what was going on. So back at home after this flight, obviously I did a bit of investigation and, you know, I took the, the nacelle apart and, you know, true enough, I found the two screws that should be holding the motor in place had fallen off and were inside the nacelle. Um, annoyingly, you know, the screws being metal, they touched some of the components on the ESC, so, you know, that killed the ESC, which was a bit annoying, but obviously that wasn't relevant to what was going on here. Um, now I couldn't help but notice that the two screws had blue thread lock on them, which, you know, should mean that those screws should never just sort of randomly fall out by themselves. Um, normally requires a little bit of force. So that got me thinking that, you know, maybe the problem here might be something to do with vibration. Um, so, you know, through process of logical deduction, I found myself having a look at the propeller. And straight away, I noticed that actually the propeller had a little bit of damage to it. Um, there's a couple of little like nicks and dents in it here and there. Um, but also I noticed that there's a crack uh, right down the middle of the hub, which obviously is quite concerning to see. So that led to me sort of thinking that maybe what had happened um, was that actually the propeller, you know, it wasn't spinning very uniformly. It was very unbalanced and potentially that could cause quite a lot of vibration. And, you know, I certainly could believe that that could shake those screws loose. The only problem with this theory is that at no point in the flight did I notice any vibration in the aircraft. And, you know, certainly upon reviewing the footage after the flight, I also didn't see any sign of vibration either, but I guess the foam in the wing could potentially do quite a good job of dampening that. Um, but yeah, that's the best theory I've come up with, is that, you know, vibration from a dodgy propeller is what caused the screws to shake loose and caused the motor to fall off. I guess also on the flight before, you know, vibration could have also played a part. Maybe the motor mount was maybe a little bit damaged from a previous incident and, you know, just the vibration was enough to then just cause the motor mount to break apart. Ultimately, I probably will never know for sure. Um, but crucially, I have since replaced the propeller. I've actually replaced both the propellers on the aircraft and I've then been out and flown it again. And now there's absolutely no problem. You know, so far, touch wood, the motor's managed to stay in place. But I think that is certainly a good sign that I'm on to the right theory, um, that vibration from a bad propeller was the cause of the problem. So, um, yeah, that's been my most recent adventure in FPV. And uh, I guess I've learned a bit of an important lesson here. Apparently, it's quite important to just check your propellers uh, quite routinely. And uh, if you see any damage, probably a good idea to get those propellers replaced. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed just this quick little story about my most recent adventure in FPV. It's certainly been <laughs> one of the more interesting flights I've done in a while. Um, if you find this video interesting, please do give it a like, as always. It certainly helps with the YouTube algorithm. And um, yeah, I've basically run out of things to say now, so I will bid you farewell, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Bye.